Good morning, and welcome to Immaculate Conception Church. Out of consideration for your neighbor, and out of respect for the real presence of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, please remember to silence all electronic devices.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and my sisters, together this morning we offer the Lord fit and worthy praise. As we gather on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear this very unique beginning of John's Gospel, where John the Baptist sees Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, coming to him, and in his own heart and in his words, proclaims who Christ is in his own life and for the whole world. There's a great conviction in John's realization. Let us this morning acknowledge our sinfulness and so be prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <coughs> Paul, called to be, a, be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth. To you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Illegitimate marriage 
who his brother's wife. And he paid the ultimate price for her. John was something special. People went out into the desert to see him because he was like no one else. John knew his mission. He went baptizing with water, with a baptism of repentance. There was a sign that people were willing to turn away from their sin and accept the will of God. John was not one to hold himself up for self aggrandizement he wasn't there to make himself important. Rather, he was willing to set aside at the right time and point to the one for whom he was preparing the way. In the Gospels, we read that the scribes and Pharisees came to him and they asked, Who are you? And the Gospel says, He admitted and did not deny it, but said, I am not the Messiah. And so they asked him, Who are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. He said, I am a voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah had written. So, John went on to tell them that he said, I baptize you with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize. One who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to unfashion. And he went on to say that he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so in today's gospel from St. John, we see that Jesus is coming towards John and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's an, an amazing pronouncement. Where John was baptizing with water as a sign of repentance, he pointed towards Jesus, the Messiah. He called him the Lamb of God. And he said, this Lamb of God would take away the sins of the world. That must have been amazing news to the people who heard it. And when John said this, he went on even further. He said that he witnessed the Holy Spirit come down on Jesus in the form of a dove. And he said that God had revealed to him that he would know who the Messiah was through the sign of the descent of the Holy Spirit. And so John, without hesitation, proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah. Not only that, but in the very last line of the Gospel, he says, that he is the Son of God. John witnessed to the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Before that time, no one would have thought of saying anything like that about anyone. It's one thing to say that he is the Son of Abraham, but to say that a person is the Son of God carried a distinct and special meaning. It meant that Jesus himself is divine. Jesus himself is related to God as God's son. And so, today's gospel, there are three powerful truths that John testified to. That Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the son of God, and that he is the Lamb of God, whose mission is to take away the sins of the entire world. Not just the Jewish people, but the world. We take these truths for granted. We know that Jesus is the Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. We know He's the Lamb of God, for we say to Him, or we sing to Him every Sunday at Mass. But to the people who heard Him for the first time, they must have been astounded. In the Gospels, we are, we are told that the Apostle Andrew heard John, and he ran to his brother Simon and said, You have to see this man. He is the Messiah. And so Andrew took Simon to see Jesus because of what John said. And so John was not afraid to have 
have his followers lead him and go to Jesus. In fact, that was his mission. That was his mission. When we look at today's gospel, we see St. John the Baptist as an example for each one of us. By virtue of our baptism and our confirmation, we are called upon to be not only disciples but apostles. One who announced the coming of the good news in the person of Jesus. And the good news is that Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. To reconcile us in our broken human nature with God himself. That is the good news that we are called to proclaim. And just like John, it's not about us. We are not the center of the spiritual or physical universe. God is. And our mission is to draw attention to God. His mission was to save the world. And so the good news that we have that we often take for granted is something that's not known by much of the world today. If they've heard the message, many people have ignored it. And it's up to us to be front and center. Jesus said, you do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. You put it on a lampstand so that everybody can benefit from its light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. We are the ones who are to take that light of Christ to the whole society at large. And people need and want to hear it. The challenge is, is how do we do that? One of the missions of a deacon is to go out into the world, into the marketplace, and get with it. To work. To earn a living. But that's not his primary mission. His primary mission is to be a witness to the gospel. To the people who are not here. I'm preaching to the redeemed, to the saved, to those who know the good news. The people who need to hear that good news message are out there. And that's why deacons are sent out into the world to spread the good news. But you know what? The deacon is only to be an example for every Christian. We all have to do that. And we have to figure out how in our own way. Because they're all different. Every one of us is different. And every one of us has a different gift. The way I witness to the gospel may be different than the way you will. But the first way is to grow in holiness. To imitate Christ as perfectly as we can. So that when people see us, they see Jesus. That's the first way. The second way is to witness to what we believe and what we do. Oftentimes I'll be at work and someone will say, well, I'm going to go out to a movie tonight with my wife and then out to dinner. And I'll say, well, that's nice. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to have a meeting. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Or I'll go to the Jubilee Lincoln Center and teach Bible school. Oh, really? What do you do that for? What's that like? And then I tell them. Now, I'm not trying to make myself a big important or a big shot in the church. I'm trying to share how my life is part and parcel of my faith and vice versa. And that don't take a lot of time. Maybe I'll tell an amusing anecdote about my grandchildren and how they're learning about the faith. Something interesting they said or funny they said about the faith. And that makes an impression. It lets people know that my faith is part of my life. We all do. And I'll tell you, without preaching, when the time comes and someone is having a problem, if they're diagnosed with cancer, they're faced with a divorce, maybe a parent is sick or dying, you know who they'll come and talk to? They'll come to that Christian who has God as part of their life. And they'll share their trouble. And we can say something as simple as, I understand your pain, I'll pray for you. I'll keep you in my prayers. That's all we have to say. And it plants the seed in that person's heart so that over time God will be able to work through them. The 
Holy Spirit will touch them and bring them to come to know Jesus. And over time, you'll be surprised at the discussions that come up. They'll ask about the Catholic faith. There'll be a new story about Pope Francis, and they'll ask about that, and you'll have a chance to talk about it. That's what it means to bring the light of Christ. We step aside so that Jesus can shine forth. And as we read in the first reading of the prophet Isaiah, what he said about the Messiah is true about his disciples. And it can be true about every one of us. When Isaiah wrote, I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Friends, in the need of in the need of the power of the Holy Spirit and His inspiration, we offer Lord our petitions that we may be set aflame to spread forth His good news to all the world. For our Pope, our bishops, our priests, and deacons who serve God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord For honest and wise decision makers in finance and industry, we pray to the Lord. Lord for adults who are seeking new life with baptism, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the young people pre preparing for confirmation, we pray to the Lord. Lord for a deeper love of Jesus, the Lamb of God, offered and received in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are sick, especially Cal Berman, Joan Jocko, Wally Monahan, and Father Benedict. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for those who have died, especially Karen Yusko, Harry Saba, Shirley Dorrington, and also for Salvatore Palma, for whom this mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord May you grant these requests, loving Father, which we bring to you on behalf of all of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts can be found in your banner book, number 686, Here I Am, Lord.
Prayer brothers and my sisters, and this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the praise and glory of his name, for our unbelievable Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through whom Christ our Lord, for through his past mystery, he accomplished the marvelous feat by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. Summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without them we are praying. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. song can be found in the gather book number eight two three
let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those that you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and in heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah, I have one out announcement. For the next of the month, this will be having a candy breakfast in the nice nice hall on Route 20 in Geneva at 1 o'clock today. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity be upon you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in Our closing song is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 507, in your gathered book. Oh uh -huh.